I am so excited today to have Jewel here. This is going to be a really fun episode for me because I love semi trucks, <laughs> and I don't drive them, but you actually drive them. And uh, we've talked a little bit about it before uh, this episode, but thank you for coming on. And um, happy to be here. Yeah. So tell me, take me back to the beginning. Like, have you always just done trucking, or was it a? Did you transition into that or something? Or? So when I was a kid, I wanted to do three things: be a cop, be a truck driver, and be a pilot. Was never a cop, but I did work probation for like five years. Okay. Um, county probation out in Yakima, and I did fly airplanes for about seven years. Wow. Yeah, I went to college in Green River in um, Auburn, Washington. Okay. And then I did my undergraduate uh, UVSC um, online, and they had a flight program where I would go down to Puyallup, uh, their mm-hmm. flight school where. It was certified for their aircraft, and I flew twin down there to get my multi-engine license. And then I finished school, went back to Yakima, and thought about what I really wanted to do because uh, during the time I was flying, 9-11 happened. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, so that changed everything. Was it just like that alone made you like, I don't want to fly? Um, So... I wanted to at least finish my education, Mm -hmm. so I did, Um, but it knocked out a lot of the little guys. I mean, even the big airlines needed bailed out by the government, Mm -hmm. you know, so I did a lot of scenic tours, introductory flights, and that was no more right? because you can't do scenic tours anymore or at that time. Okay. Because... It was restricted or... Right. Mm -hmm. Because I would literally fly a passenger, say, for instance, downtown Seattle. Wow. You know, you would call and get clearance. And that all ended after 9-11. Yeah. Wow. I never even thought about that. Yeah. You know, and I was in Las Vegas, actually, on a private charter. Um, a buddy of mine from college had gotten a check. He was oil royalties. Okay. So flew him down to, picked him up in LA, flew him down to Texas. He picked up his $82,000 check. Wow. And on the way back, we landed in Vegas for a little fun. And the next morning, 9-11 happened. And incidentally, Shauna calls me because I've known her for that long. Mm -hmm. And she was like, turn on your TV. And from there, just the world changed. So anyways, we were grounded there for like five, six days. They finally opened up the airspace. I tilled it back to L.A., dropped my friend off. And then I jumped a flight from Southwest to um, Seattle and sold my plane. Wow. Yeah. Just right when you got to see a SeaTac or whatever you uh SeaTac, yeah. You sold that thing and Yeah. Wow. I had no idea you had flown planes. That's mm-hmm. really cool. Yeah. It was cool. And it is that something you still like keep licensed or is that just So uh, you have your license for life. Okay. It's one of those things cuz it's a federal license, but the only way to keep current is to get a biannual flight review every 2 years okay. to stay current to fly on your own. And then from there you would still have to fly at least once a month to stay current it's not like riding a bike yeah I, you know i had to do i don't know if it's the same as what you're talking about multi-engine but i had when i was working at channel six i had to do what do you call them touch and goes one time is that kind of the monthly thing you're talking about like you have to yep something like that yep okay exactly like that okay mm-hmm. yeah it seems very regulated and, and i guess that's a good, a good thing but well you don't want to you know you don't unprepared yeah right you know, like I said, it's not like riding a bike and it's not like a car. You can't just pull over. Right, right. You know, so if something happens. You're up there. and You're up there. Yeah. And you you got to worry about the people down here, let alone your own soul and however many souls you have on board. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. That's, it's so interesting though, because I was thinking, even before I knew you were a pilot, like you've always had this kind of like transport or like that kind of, you wanted to do something like mm-hmm. that. And I never wanted to own a home. I yeah. always wanted to be just out there. Mobile. Mm-hmm. You know, exploring the country, seeing the mountainsides, the sunrises, the moonsets, you know, and I've seen a lot. That's cool. And it's gorgeous out there. It's gorgeous up there. You know, when you're like this cloud level that we have now, yeah. when you're flying, you're wearing sunglasses. Because you're up above all that. Yeah. And, and yeah, and bright. I was thinking like yesterday we had that eclipse. Was yeah. that, that kind of like that? You can get up there and just see... You could see so much more. Because I know here it was all cloudy yesterday. Yep. Stuff, yeah. yeah, you could see the if you were flying yesterday above the cloud deck. Yeah, you could see, Just it see sure. everything. Wow. So, okay, so you sold the plane and then 
you, did you go to a, a school or something for truck driving or did you just jump right in? And, yeah. And, so it took me a little bit to figure out what I wanted to do. And I remembered from being a child, I wanted to drive truck too. So I got on with CentOS for a little bit, not quite what I wanted because it was just the small trucks. You know, I wanted the big articulated trucks, you know, the big rigs. Yeah. And so talked to a few people I knew and they said, um, go do this warehouse and talk to some of the truckers. So I did tried to find out what good company I could train with. And I'm sure everybody's heard of Swift. Yeah. I've heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They get the b- get big blue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so Swift stands for a swing wide. It's a freaking trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Stevie wonder, um, information for the blind or something like that too. Mm. Um, institution for something. Anyways, are they like the biggest? Um, I believe so. Okay. Um, Swift, CR England, Pride. Um, they're yeah, they capture the market. Yeah. Mm. So they don't only have their trucking company; they own um, like a Freightliner mm-hmm. dealership. So they'll lease or buy their rigs from themselves. Right. rent it to themselves, make money off themselves. And they also have the biggest share of um, commodables. So you want to ship something, you go to this warehouse, like Americold, say for instance, you know, so they have their own contacts with Americold. So they send them money to ship their stuff. Gotcha. And then they'll say, okay, we don't have enough trucks for that. We'll give it to this other outfit or a small trucker owner operator and they'll sell them that load, but take a piece of the pie. Okay. You know, so, so they're taking a, a, a margin off like everything. Everything. Yeah. It's like a pyramid. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. They're like the Walmart of, yeah. Of, uh, oh, Walmart's or... got their own too. Well, <laughs> Walmart, um, they work with, um, Swift and Snyder, um, and then another company. So, like on the East Coast, you'll see a Swift tractor pulling a, a Snyder trailer. Okay. You know, and they'll be delivering in and out of the Walmart warehouses or the stores. Yeah. And over here on this side of the state or the country, you'll see that with um, Swift and Walmart. So, you'll see a Swift tr- tractor pulling a, a Walmart trailer. So, depending on where you are. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, and in that process, you heard like, you heard from these guys that Swift was the one. Is that what you're saying? Well, I didn't really like them. They were too big. Yeah. Um, and from their record, I really didn't care to want to be part of that. Yeah, yeah. So I went to CR England, which okay. is down there in West Valley City, um, Utah, just south of Salt Lake okay. City. And so I did my school with them. It was um, about 20 years ago. 17, 18 years ago. Wow. And to get in, it was like three grand for your school. Okay. But they were doing a winter special where you could sign up for a thousand bucks. Oh, wow. To get your CD. Third of the price, yeah. Yeah. And then 3,000 was a lot. Yeah. So nowadays, to go to school is between five and six. Okay. So it's like doubled pretty much. Yeah. 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 So, anyways, so the. Um, book part was a month and they did about three weeks of road training Mm -hmm. and they just took you around that area a lot of back roads a lot of warehouses where you learn to drive a big rig it's a good training area yeah Yeah, mm -hmm. perfect training area so there were eight speeds at the time and nowadays you have automatics but okay i was gonna ask you about that yeah because i always heard isn't there like 10 and 10 speeds and all this stuff. There's 10 speeds, 13, 18. Wow. But mm-hmm. but it's nowadays mostly automatic. A lot of those big companies, Swift, okay. Sierra England. Gotcha. Because they will throw anybody behind that yeah. wheel. Yeah. I was thinking it's a liability mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. yeah. So now, too, you hear jokes, jokingly, you know, people, um, kids don't know how to drive a stick. Yeah. You know, so often you're here on the news, these people went to go accost somebody and steal their car, jumped in and find out it's a manual. (laughs) How do you drive this thing? I've heard those jokes Uh, like that's the best deterrent. It's just drive a stick. stick. Yeah. Yeah. Because they'll they'll get through the window, but then be like, I can't drive this thing. Right. Yep. 
But yeah, that's cool. So then that's CR England and you stuck with them. So no, I didn't. I found um, just literally a mile down the road. I I did stick with them until I got my training and I did one month on the road with a trainer. You kind of got your, uh, was it license or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your CDL. They call it a hard copy. CDL, yeah. Hard copy. Yeah, that's what they call it. Interesting, yeah. And it's a class A. It's articulated, so the hinge, the fifth wheel, is class A. Class B would just be a straight truck, but with air brakes. Okay. 12.5 and up. Gotcha. Um, 1,000 pounds, 12.5. So um, I just didn't like the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. It seemed a lot like I heard a lot of Swift. Yeah, it sounds like the same kind of mm-hmm. thing, right? Yeah, rift raft drivers, people coming in and out. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I'm not a golden child per se. Yeah. You know, but nobody's perfect. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you know, some of these people came from hard luck cases, you know, either divorces, you know, they lost their this, their that, and you know, it's like a country music song, you know? Yeah. So it's like oh, the only thing I could do is trucking. So, you know, and they call it affordable living. I mean, you're <laughs> rolling and your house is right behind yeah. you and you're getting paid and you're getting paid to see the country. You got the, what do they call it? Sleeper. Sleeper. Yeah. Sleeper birth. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, more power to them. At least they were trying to figure something out to get their life straight, you totally, know? Yeah. And, um. It's a way to get financially independent. Yeah. 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 So, uh, anyways, because of that, uh, couple of the other drivers was like, well, there's um, Central Refrigerated. They don't exist anymore, but it was just down the road from Sierra England. And so I went down, took a look at their outfit. So Sierra England, they do have, um, it's a school for trucking. And it's like a barracks. Okay. It was like 10 people per room. Wow. So it's military style. Yeah, it's like a boot camp. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. And again, like I said earlier, they're trying to ship as many people in and out to get behind the wheel. Yeah. So when I went to um, Central Refrigerated, there was two people per room. Okay. A lot cleaner. Um, it's a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pe- the people look more well to do. Yeah. Cleaner. You know, it wasn't their last resort. Yeah, yeah. You know, trucking was not their last resort. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, they had a big war room, it looked like. So you walked in, I mean, huge, like the size of a warehouse and screens and monitors up on the wall. And it showed locations of their trucks, where the loads are. The weather, you know. That's cool. Yeah, I actually it, never thought about that. There's like a mm, command center. For yeah, yeah. Ba- yeah, command center. That's a good word for it. Yeah. So, and then down on the floor would be your dispatchers. You know, they just look up, blah, 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 you know, see where their weather is, you know, because you can call for information. Right. And hey, need some help, whatever, you know. So, so a lot better environment, clean. And uh, so, see, uh, uh, CR England at that time had Freightliners. It was standard Mm -hmm. yeah and it was pretty common too throughout america but that was pretty um much when volvo had started coming in okay and those are nice rigs too are they more expensive um they're about the same okay 100 100, 125 but they started to eat away at the other competitors no (laughs) they actually got bought out by swift oh wow okay yeah so um and I think they were related. Story was was like Swift was a brother, Sierra England was a brother, and Pride or Prime was another brother or something like that. Anyways, again, they had the market. So they had these uh, nice plush Volvos, and there was eight speeds and ten speeds. So I jumped ship and went to um, Central Refrigerated, mm-hmm. and I drove for them uh, about a year. Okay. And is that all also, I'm guessing that that's refrigerated or they do? Yep. Okay. Yep. So they got those huge, I don't even know what they are, AC? It's a diesel or... motor on the bulkhead of your trailer. Okay. So it's got its own separate diesel for the and cooling. And its yeah. own separate fuel tank too. Wow. Mm-hmm. Just to run that diesel. Uh-huh. Yeah. The motor. Is that about the same as like your regular tank? Like when you fill up your... So your main tank's on the tractor. You got 150... A piece, so you got 300 for Gallon. your tractor. Yeah. Yeah, gallons. And the reefer unit had 
depends on the unit, was like a 50-gallon okay. or a 75-gallon. Gotcha. So it's a lot smaller, but you yeah. still have to make sure it's running. And yeah, stuff. right. And the diesel motor for the reefer was, I believe, a four-cylinder. Okay. Not a little the, smaller. Yeah, smaller, yeah. so it didn't consume as much fuel. And your tractor is a six inline um, motor. Okay. A little beefier. Oh, yeah. 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 A lot beefier. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. interesting. The jugs on those are like six jugs about that big around. Jeez. That is <laughs> just inline. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's huge. It's as big as a car. Yeah. The engine itself. I kid you not. Yeah. Is, if you ever seen one on a cherry picker, it is as big as a car. Wow. Yeah. yeah I'd like to see that. Yeah. They're huge. Um, So, yeah, and that was... Because I didn't even know you've been doing this that long. So you've basically been doing this like 20 years. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Wow. Well, I did stop for a while when I was raising my kids, but went back to it about five years ago. Okay. So all in total, I've been driving for about eight years. Okay. That's still a very long time. Yeah. Um, that's a cool story too. I Like I said, I had no idea about the plane stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, well, it was in my past. I don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, a lot of times people will talk about something and somebody you were talking to will think you're full of, you know, it's like, oh, this guy don't know how to fly planes or, yeah, you know, he's just talking out of his ass. No, I, whatever, I believe you. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we've met too. Totally, totally. You know, so it's not like I would feed you a line. Yeah. yeah. You know, but. Sometimes people just. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's cool, though. That's really yeah. cool. Um, yeah, and so is that pretty similar to what you're doing now? Or it's is... exactly similar. The only difference is altitude. Okay. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. It's an interesting way to think about it. So the um, DOT and the FAA are both governed by the NTSB. Okay, gotcha. National Transportation and, Safety Board. Yeah, and don't they also do rail and uh Yeah. Like yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but I also meant, like, are you – the refrigeration stuff is that you're doing I'm, I'm guessing you're doing a similar type of trucking now right well right now i'm doing flatbed flatbeds mm-hmm. okay see i don't know any of this stuff yeah right? <laughs> so so they'll just put anything on the flatbed and yeah pretty much okay and as as far as distance um i know a little bit about your kind of schedule but you do uh, from like Washington to so currently I only do Washington Oregon and it's a small area from Portland down to Waldport okay Bend Oregon um, as far north as Ocean Shores or as far east as um, Goldendale Goldendale okay yeah. it's funny because like to you that you said that that's not a long distance but to me I'm like that is a long distance but I don't know <laughs> I guess some people do multi-leg like like what's the longest a trucker would do like you're talking like three nights well or something. when you're over the road you're when, when you when you release your brakes and you set out you don't know when you're coming back oh okay because it and just i mean that passion. quite literally yeah yeah you might mm-hmm. just be there for a week or you don't know no, or no yeah no <laughs> it's more like months months one time i was out for three months jeez and that's you're saying you don't know that until you don't know after you're gone. You don't know when you're coming home. Let's put it that way. Yeah. As soon as you set sail, you don't know when you're coming home. And is that kind of like up to you? Like, did the dispatcher say like, "Hey, you can continue," or is it just more of like you don't have a uh, choice? A or? lot of it is no. So, say for instance, somebody dies, they'll work on getting you home. Yeah. Or, hey, I have a graduation, my kid, whatever. At this date, try to get me home a week or whatever in advance. They'll, and, they'll let you. Do they'll that. work with you. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But so they'll try to find you a load to your home or as close to it, and you find a place for your rig, and you go do your thing. You climb back in your rig and you get back to work. I see. Okay. Yeah. I think about that sometimes because I'll drive over here and see like a semi with no trailer, and just thinking like, oh, they're just stopping in or whatever, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, usually, you keep your trailer. Okay. You hardly it's part ever, of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. You hardly ever separate from your trailer unless you run to town for lunch or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you're always with a trailer because that's your money. Yeah. Well, I'm at, I was just thinking, like, what's the spread? Like, do, are most people owners of the trucks no. or not? That's pretty rare. No, it's even more rare now. They're mostly renting. Yeah. You're mostly working for somebody else. Yeah. And even that's hard right now with the fuel prices because mm-hmm. diesel is a byproduct of gasoline. It's the excrement of what you put in your tank. Gotcha. It's diesel. 
So it's all, I mean, the prices are. And the sky, prices sky used to be less than gasoline. Okay. But for that's, diesel. That's flipped. It's flipped. Wow. Do you know why? I don't know. Guess. Take a guess. Um, I mean, I would just guess like just inflation, but I don't know. <laughs> because I don't know specifically. Yeah. Because one, they hate trucks. Okay. Right. And two, they know truckers make money. Mm. Yeah. It did, I, I'm curious about that because there does seem to be like a. You're saying the gas companies hate it. Is that what you're saying? Um, or whoever's. The gas company, the government. Everybody, yeah. All those people <laughs> yeah. that yeah, yeah. are here to bend you over. Because I was going to say, yeah, there does seem to be from all those groups like a. I, and I mean, I'm a car lover and I also see an anti car sentiment, but I could imagine the anti truck sentiment is pretty big. Here's a fun fact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, those diesel trucks are polluting our atmosphere. Oh, those trains are polluting our atmosphere. That's, that's what they say. Yeah. That's what they say. So in 2020, when they shut the country down, mm -hmm. or I should say the planet, um, we were still running because you need your food. Yeah. And grocery stores were open for the most, you know. Mm -hmm, they were. Yeah. And so we were working. We were doing the same hours, but we were. <laughs> Okay. You had to be working overtime. I would <laughs> no, it wasn't yeah. working overtime. However, they they pull. Okay, you can only drive eleven hours a day, fourteen hours uh, work. That's the per day limit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But during the pan scandemic, <laughs> they um, said, "Okay, you know what? During this scandemic, we'll allow you to work over your allotted time." Okay, so they loosen that for that. Uh huh. I didn't you know, know what? That, yeah. You are not safe driving more than 11 hours, but only because the scandemic <laughs> is going on. We'll yeah. trust you. Now you can do it. We'll yeah. trust you. Yeah. I didn't know that. That is... Because uh -huh. I know they did similar <clears throat> stuff with other like, businesses, but that's wild. Yeah. yeah. So what I was going to say before I thought of that was um, when the scandemic started, there was no cars on the road. Yeah. I believe it. It was like... I had to go to work and I was like, there's nobody out here. Yeah. It was like an apocalypse. It yeah. was like the second coming. Yeah. You know, and guess what happened to the air quality in Los Angeles? Got better. Oh my God, did it. From LA, you could see Big Bear Mountain. Yeah. You can actually see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember seeing those photos. That's funny. I hadn't thought about that in mm -hmm. a couple of years, but yeah, mm -hmm. it cleared up and... Mm -hmm. It was gorgeous. Yeah. It was Is gorgeous. It, is it, I'm glad you're talking about this because I was going to ask you later about <laughs> some other stuff, um, like the Canadian trucker stuff. I'm sure you know something about that, right? A little bit. I just wanted to know like your opinion on, or your view on that because I'm always super supportive of that whole the protest they were doing. And, oh. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's over now, I think, but hopefully. It, yeah, it's been over. But I don't know. Was there a lot of that down here in the States? Was it? No, unfortunately. Um, well, there's two parts to that. When you stop an industry that distributes everything by truck, you're going to hurt people. Yeah. And that includes your friends and your family. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Because everything is delivered by truck. Mm -hmm. Because you can't have a train pull up to a Safeway and deliver food. That's right. Yeah. You can't have an airplane pull up to a Safeway and deliver food. It's a truck. They Whether, call it, I always, I always call, heard it called last mile delivery for that kind of, like somebody has to get it there, like yep. you're saying. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, so the trains will ship the same stuff we do. Yeah, and but they'll go, they're going cross country, you know. And then when they get to said location, say the port of Vancouver, they'll drop a couple of rail cars of plywood or OSB or whatever at like where I work. It's like a big warehouse or something. Uh huh. Yeah. And then they'll um, load that product onto me. So with my flatbed, I'm a maxi. I have eight axles. Okay. So I have three on the tractor that are fixed, and I have another axle I could drop to support more weight. And same on the trailer, three fixed and another drop. So um, one time I had done three runs from Vancouver to um, Woodland, um, and the three full loads I did, I was weighing in at about 100,000 pounds. I think there was four units of the product left on the rail car that I couldn't carry. So basically, one rail car would be three of my big rigs. Wow. And you just have one, obviously. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of cargo, though. Yeah. That's a lot of cargo. Yeah. But I get your point of like, yeah, like somebody, 
there's no way rail can do it or planes or anything like trucks have to do it. Yeah. That's crazy. Though. And there's yeah. 2 million drivers on the road at any given time here in the U S is that right? Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. That's a yeah. lot. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely one of the reasons I wanted to do this episode. Cause like I kind of fell in love with trucks a couple of years ago, but yeah, like people just don't, I think even think about it. No, of course they don't. Yeah. But they, if they don't have any experience in it or have a friend or a family member in it, then yeah, they won't know. It's just out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just amazing. Like you're saying, cause it's not even like just grocery stores. Like I was saying, it's like hospitals and all this, you know, everybody needs stuff and it's gotta be delivered somehow. But, um, can you take me through a typical day? Like in your life, or is it always different? <laughs> so right now for me, it's always different. So I'll give you for first over the road, your long haul, your 48 states. Okay. Um, you deliver in Seattle and then you get a dispatch. Say, hey, go pick up here in Tacoma and take it to Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. So you'll go there, load up, strap your load down or um, put the bars in your in your reefer trailer Mm -hmm. make sure you set your reefer unit for whatever temperature and then you start hauling so the hardest part is backing into a dock which Mm. is not as easy as some people think it's it's funny because i think i told you before i played like this trucking video game and Um, that is the hardest part too is like get docking it and doing all that stuff yeah yeah Yeah. so us flatbedders call those guys door swingers okay so all you're doing is swinging the door open when they're done, you pull out, you swing the door closed, you lock it, put the seal on it, and you're gone. <laughs> That's like a almost, Pretty easy. almost like a NASCAR crew or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. So the hardest part of your day would just be driving from here to Phoenix. And from here to Phoenix, uh, two and a half, three days. Couple days, yeah. Yeah. So they'll usually set uh, an extra day so you can get there safely and on time. You unload and then do that again. I had a load once from, I think it was like Rochester, New York, all the way down to Anaheim, had a load of candy. And it took me five days, and they gave me eight to do it. You know, I did it in five, offload, get to your next run. You know, because the more runs you do, the more money you make. Right, right. You know, because you're not sitting. I was thinking, yeah, is it, I was just going to ask about that. So they give you eight days, like in that example, and it's just kind of like, they just leave it up to you. You take your breaks. Uh, obviously, the twelve-hour limit thing, but like it's kind of up to you to manage that time to right. get as, as soon as possible. Or yeah. Interesting. And then you just yeah, like you're saying, you get the next job, more money. Yep, more money for you, more money for the company, and your product gets there sooner. They could distribute to the stores a yeah. lot sooner. They're not running out. And is it like like when you get there on that example? Like, is it like they'll just you get to pick from them or is it just one? They'll be like, this is what you No, sometimes, yeah, you get to pick for sure. You know, Hey, I got this or I got this or I got that. Where you want to go? That's cool. You know what? Florida sounds pretty good right about now. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. You get some flexibility and options. And and what do you do? Like if you do have, cause I'm kind of, I used to be kind of a ice road truckers nerd. I was watching that show, but (laughs) that's a whole nother world. Yeah. Up in Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. But, I was just curious, like when you do have like breakdown or something, is it kind of on you or do they send people to help with the They'll end? send. Yeah. Yeah. If you can make it to a shop, make it to a shop. If it's an emergency, you know, you don't want to just pull off the side of the road. You got to find a safe place Somewhere. to pull off the side of the road. Yeah. Because you're long. Yeah. You know, and you're wide. So you know. You're sticking out in the road. Or right. Yeah. You know, you don't want to stick out in the road and um, you want to be in a safe place for the crew to work on you. So if you have a flat, you know, best to pull off the freeway if you can. If you can't, pull as far to the shoulder as you can. That way, uh, mechanic could you got fix your tire. Yeah, yeah. And it's you know, because you know, everybody knows that if you're a you know tow uh, a tow man, you know, mm-hmm. their job's very dangerous. I bet. Yeah. You know, it's all on the freeway. And, yep. Yeah. And people aren't looking out for you. Is it how common is it? Because I feel like I see tires blown out in trucks oh, all the time. All the time. Yeah. Is it like a daily or weekly thing? Well, so. I guess it's hard to predict. It's hard to predict. You know, check your equipment, make sure your axles are straight, make sure your tires are good, make sure they're properly properly inflated. Mm -hmm. You know, thump them, do a thump test because, you know, you could thump your tire with a hammer or a mallet until at least pressure. You know, obviously you could stick a air nozzle to it, but about 90 to 100 pounds of pressure depends on the tire. Um, so your trailer tires are usually all capped. Okay. And those are the ones that usually 
you see shredded gotcha. on the freeway. The steers, which are your, um, you steer with, yeah, we call them steers. Those are not capped and those are expensive. Okay. Those are about 700 bucks a tire. They keep all the good ones on the, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Cause oh, yeah. most of them are in the back. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, you got eight on your drives, eight on your trailer and two on your steers. Okay. So that's gotcha, your, gotcha. your 18 wheeler. Yeah. You know, me, I'm a 24 wheeler. Jeez. <laughs> you know, yeah. I put more rubber to yeah. the pavement. That's a than, lot of wheels. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're tires. I guess. Well, yeah. Damn. Well. Um, I was just thinking about this this morning. Like, is there, cause I had a girl on here who drove a, she, she was a deckhand on a towboat. She's trying to drive the towboat, but she was talking about how there's just a problem with getting recruiting. Like, do you see that? Is that a problem now getting talent? Now? Or? No, it's been, <laughs> Okay. nobody wants. So trucking is not easy yeah. and it takes a, um, <laughs> idiot if you will yeah to want to be a trucker <laughs> let alone stay a trucker okay it's not for the faint of heart yeah you know it's not a nine to five totally it's not totally. a monday through friday well mine's monday through friday now but it's a little more turbulent maybe than a lot more turbulent yeah you know you got traffic to deal with weather you know if you got a lot of snowpack on the mountain you got to throw chains yeah you know and some states require more chains than others and those chains aren't aren't light yeah <laughs> You yeah, know? I've seen people try to carry them. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they're heavy. Those triple yeah. rails way more than I do. Jeez. Yeah. And you should at least have two, well, four sets of chains on your tractor and two on your trailer. Okay. And you know that's a lot of iron you're you're throwing. Yeah. You a know. lot of weight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're throwing that in the winter off the side of the road. Yeah. And so in whatever weather's coming down. Yeah, and you never know. So do you see people get into it and then just bail? Because, oh yeah. 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 Uh huh. Like they'll get licensed and all that, or yep. just kind of, ha- yep. yeah. Wow. Yep. It's- yeah. That's like spring and summer and fall. <laughs> <laughs> the shitty, the shitty weather comes around. Yeah. Yep. yeah makes sense. I'm out. Yeah. I could totally see that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about that too. Cause I, I also had my, my buddy actually was here this weekend. He's a cook and he was saying during the pandemic, a lot of people went into trucking because they're like, F this restaurant job. I'm going to try to, cause the restaurants were shut down, t- you know, as well. And, um, but career change to try to make more money. So I don't know. Maybe there's more people now trying to do it or something. But I also knew an old guy that I worked with at Channel 6 who was a video editor for until he was like almost 60. And I heard he became a trucker. And A lot of people do it for the retirement. Retirement, yeah. For all the same reasons we talked about earlier. You yeah. get to see the country and you're getting paid for it. Right, right. So when I started, there was no Uber. You know, GPS had just come out. Um, they still have the yellow book. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the old phone book, yeah. yeah, Um, yeah. And the truck stops would have uh, phones on the wall where you would have your yellow pages and you would be talking to your dispatcher and you'd pull out your Randall McNally and you would chart your own course. Just had to do it there. Yeah, Yeah, you know, you you should know where you're going and write it down on on a piece of paper. That way, when you're sitting behind the wheel, turn left at exit, okay, right on this street, and you're there. Yeah. You know. I mean, GPS had game chain oh, yeah, yeah yeah so two things about gps you don't want to use your common phone gps trucking okay because need something better you know you need a trucking gps okay and even then you should still verify that with a map with a good old school random mally yeah map yeah you know because um if you get lost in a big rig <laughs> <Okay. laughs> i can imagine yeah that's you not can't fun. just turn around it's not fun yeah mm-hmm can't just turn around you know you get lost on a t- on a two-lane street mm-hmm. you cannot just right it's- i'm just gonna go back <laughs> in reverse no yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> you would have to yeah if you can't find a place like one time i went past my stop and i'm like crap and this is back in the map days the paper map and um so I got lucky though somebody stopped me it's like dude you can't go down that way okay so he he helped me I was able to back my rig up, you know, I pulled along this street, backed my tractor trailer into his dirt lot, and I was able to come out and get back to where I was going. But without that, you know, yeah, some places you, if you get too far, then you're going to have to back up. Yeah. It's just an ugly situation. Well, yeah, Yeah. because if you have cars coming your direction and if it's at night. Yeah. Does that take a while to like... 
um, like it, for rookies and stuff, like you getting that, like matching it to the Every, ma- math. And everybody's stuff. different. Yeah. Some people pick things up like that. Some people you just can't, you just can't train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're never going to learn. They're anything. never going to learn. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. And, and those are the people that should never be behind the wheel. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I seen um, when I was, uh, I was with a small outfit at a Yakima. We we're hauling wine bottles out of um, Columbia Crest Winery. Peter Patterson, Washington. Okay. <clears throat> there was this England driver, female. Nothing against females. I see a lot of them out there. Yeah. I don't care. She just happened to be, yeah. It just happened to be a female, yeah. yeah. And they could have taken more time to work with her on backing, but this lady couldn't figure out how to back that trailer into a dock to save her life. Mm. She was able to, and I was trying to get into one of the docks next to her. She was finally able to move clear enough for me. I swung up around behind her, backed my trailer up, hit the dock, dropped the trailer, left, hooked another trailer, and I was on my way out, and she was still trying to back into that hole. <laughs> so it was like hours? Is it, is it, I don't know how long it took <laughs> okay, her. Okay. I was gone. Jeez. And those are the people you want to stay away from on yeah. the highway. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Never sit next to a truck. You sit behind them. Give them distance. Never pull in front of a truck mm-hmm. and slow down. Mm-hmm. You know, we do look for it. We expect it, especially in the city. It just happens. You know, so a good professional driver will basically, when I drive, I can already tell by looking in my mirrors what this car is going to do, what that car is going to do, so forth and so on. And so that will um, tell me which lane to be in also. So if you're in the city, I drivers usually don't sit in the right lane through the city, mm-hmm. although they want us to be in the right lane. And here's the reason why. Um, or there are several reasons. One, you don't want to be a trucker in this lane and one in this lane because traffic will be doing this Mm -hmm. and it will cause greater chaos. So if a truck is in the center lane and I'm in the right lane, I'll move over to the center lane anyway just because he's in that lane and I'm in that lane and then traffic will flow around you. Gotcha. Two, um... The right lane in the city, they call them distributor collectors. So when you enter and exit the freeway mm-hmm. or highway, whatever you're on, the four wheelers will have an opportunity to merge onto the freeway. Mm-hmm. And if a truck's there, again, you're so long, you know, you're 60 to 70 feet long or more, mm-hmm. depends on if you're pulling doubles or triples here in Oregon. So now, I mean, this just one truck could cover the entire entrance ramp for a car. Wow. Yeah. You know, so that car is either going to have to speed up and cut the trucker off. Right, right. Or he's going to have to slow down and pull in behind the truck and whoever wants to be behind a truck. Right. So they always speed up Not and me. cut you off. Yeah. Right. You know, but. Especially in a city. I would, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, but here's the thing that us truckers think. Um, one, what's it going to hurt you to get behind me? Right. In the wintertime, when that weather is just crap. More rain's coming down. Who are you following? Yeah. You're following a trucker. It's usually a truck. Because we plow the road. Yeah. We're 10 feet high. We mm-hmm. can see further than a car. Yeah. You know, so in the wintertime, and it's happened to me multiple times, you're plowing the road. You're the first one on that fresh powder, and you have a line of cars behind you. <laughs> you're like the... Uh... Like the, the guinea pig. Yeah, or like the leader or whatever. Like they're yeah. just following you. Yeah. yeah. And if I took an exit and got back on the freeway, I guarantee you those cars would follow me off the exit and back onto the freeway. Yeah. Because they want that protection. Uh huh. Yeah. Plus, you're laying down tracks. Yeah. You know, so when a car is behind you, they at least have that track. So even if they spin out a little bit, that track that we lay down can keep you in yeah. between the rails, if you will. Get some traction. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought about that. Um, <laughs> That's funny, though. So I like it switches with the seasons. Uh-huh, yeah. 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 Last year, I think it was last year or the year before, I was heading over to Bend over Mount Hood. Mm-hmm. And it was compact snow and ice. Uh, different lanes had different um, traction. Like depth or yeah, uh-huh. yeah. And so I was coming along, and I'm heavy already, so 
I can't climb a mountain as fast as when I'm not as heavy. So anyways, this car passes me. <laughs> and as he's coming up on my uh, cab, the four-wheeler behind me that was behind him was like, oh, looks like he's doing pretty good. So I'll get in behind him. And then we could both pass this big rig. Mm -hmm. That first car that started to come in front of me <laughs> started to slide and oh, slip. Oh, no. Yeah. They, could you tell if they had chains or anything? They did not nothing, have chains. Nothing, yeah. mm -hmm. And so that second four-wheeler saw that. <laughs> That's scary. <yeah. laughs> it scared him. Yeah. He backed off and he got right back behind me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. That's so funny because I was going to ask you about stuff like that, but that's like a perfect example of like a story of oh, I got just plenty. Dumb, dumb drivers and, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, yeah, a lot of times it is dumb drivers, but a lot of times it's just an accident. Yeah. I mean, accidents happen. Mm -hmm. And they could be doing all that they can to keep it in between the lane and still have an accident. Yeah. But here's one thing, too, I've learned from trucking. If you're working that hard, if your senses are working that hard, if you're white knuckle driving, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be driving. Mm. That's kind of like the limit of, you know, at that point. Yeah. Kind of fried. What are you doing out here? Yeah. You know, I can handle snow and ice, mm -hmm. you know, but again, I got 24 wheels on the ground. Mm. You know, they got four. So the displacement for a big rig is better than a Vita Bug. Wow. Because we have so many tires on right, the Right, right. Just more points of contact uh -huh. and stuff. And yeah. More displacement. So you, I, I see what you're saying now. So for regular drivers, that's what you're saying. Because mm -hmm. I have a great... For truckers, too. Okay. You both, know, because yeah. some truckers can't handle what another trucker can. Yeah. You know, but if even me, for however much experience I have, um, if I find myself in that predicament, I'm pulling over, too. Yeah. Because no load is it worth is, it. It's a bad... Yeah. I remember doing that once... I think this was last year, but there was a really icy year up here. And I, when I had my Dodge Challenger, my muscle car, I drove that and I was driving like 15 miles an hour all the way up to Vancouver from not Portland. Worth it. And it was not worth it. I almost skidded out a couple times and I, you know, had enough space to break a couple times, but I was just like, this is not even worth the risk of rear wheel cars on snow and ice. Just don't. It's horrifying. Just yeah. don't. Yeah. You know, front wheel drive or all wheel drive. And even then, you can still have a problem. Yeah. So, I was going up Snoqualmie Pass. This is a long time ago. And this kid and their mom, Pa's Pathfinder. Um, again, compact snow and ice. We were coming around a curve, and he was trying to take me around a curve. You it's like a bad idea. You could already see what's yeah, going to happen. Yeah. Feel bad for the kid. I mean, he was a kid, like 18, 19. He was just thinking, I'll just pass him. And, yeah. yeah. I got an all wheel drive. Oh, yeah, this will be easy. Boom. So he slips. He hits the jersey barrier, the divider. Oh, wow. Does a 360. Hits my field tank. Wow. It severs the straps on my tank, puts a hole in it, and it's dragging. The I can whole see, tank is right Wow. Yeah. Jeez. And I can see sparks coming from my mirrors. So my tank's on the ground, dragging with diesel flowing out sparking out, yeah mm -hmm. Jeez. so uh you can't just stop again so it took me i don't know half a mile or more at least half a mile to stop to come to a Find safe and complete yeah. stop mm -hmm. so in that time he did another 360 after hitting me and caused another accident behind us with a car or a truck or two other vehicles Jeez. Mm -hmm. so somebody picks him up and comes up to me my cab and by then i'm finally stopped <laughs> you know oh, oh, you know yeah and he's like are you okay it's like dude am i okay yeah. i was wondering if you died totally yeah you know spinning like four yeah. times yeah well because like if he was just barely um a fraction of a second pre or post that impact he would have been on my bumper or under my trailer oof yeah, and especially with all the the fuel spewing out there too, mm -hmm. it's just like crazy situation. Yeah, wow. And that's like, how is that like once a year you see something like that, or all the time? All right? the time. Yeah, especially in winter, I think. Oh, yeah. It doesn't even have to be winter. Yeah. <laughs> you get this fog, this low level fog. Um, I think it was this last spring. There was a low level fog in between Salem and mm -hmm. um, South 
somewhere around Woodbury. And anyways, it was so thick. People didn't know what to do, and it caused like a twenty plus car. I remember, you remember that. that. Yeah, and it was like yeah, it was like thirty vehicles or something, and it was yeah, it was near Salem. And I remember because the, the pictures, you literally could see nothing. It was just like fog and like, and then like a group of vehicles that were all crashed out. But that's terrifying because I think, and you'd know better than me about this, but I feel like. I complain about the drivers up here all the time, and I feel like in those situations, they just don't. It just, doesn't they're, matter they're how good like, you are. I'm, they're just like, I'm going out there. Like like the average passenger or driver, I'm just saying. They're just like, we're going in the fog. We don't care. You know, We're going to the, whatever it is they're doing. And I just feel like that attitude is really common up here. In yeah, area. but so you have to understand, too, with adverse weather conditions, it can start like that and end just like that. That's true, yeah. You know, so it's not anything that anybody – could have expected totally yeah. you know it you know it just happens you know down in california they when it's like really dry and they get those desert winds yeah you know all of a sudden you get this big big wind it's like a 40 mile an hour yeah. yeah taking all this dirt right across the freeway oh wow okay and it's the same as fog you can't see yeah it's like a what do they call those monsoons not a monsoon no. like a sandstorm sandstorm yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good one yeah and all of a sudden visibility is zero yeah. And you just would never be able to predict that. Yeah, it just happens. Yeah, yeah I guess that's true. Um, and you can't really expect what to do when that happens because you don't think it's going to be that bad when you hit it. But then it gets worse and worse and worse. And then now you can't see the emergency lane, say, for instance, to pull over. Mm, you because, can't even see that. Yeah. yeah, you can't even see that. Yeah. And you can't see if there's any, if there's a cliff or a ditch or whatever. Because usually the best thing would be to pull into the emergency lane and get off the road if you can. Yeah. You know, if there is no ditch, get into the dirt. <laughs> yeah. Something, yeah. Soft yeah. Often, yeah, yeah. Because if there's a big rig behind you, you're dead. Totally, yeah. You're dead. So you just need to get out of the way and, yeah. That's interesting, yeah. It's so crazy because there's so many different climates that you got to, you know, get the desert and the mountains and the coast and stuff and um i'm curious like what you think about just the future in general of trucking because a lot of people feel like automation will come in and kind of <laughs> take it but i just don't see that happening. so i want to see an automatic truck throw straps yeah i want to see an automatic truck throw chains all the stuff outside the truck is mm -hmm. that kind of what you're talking about yeah that you mm -hmm. have to do you yeah know? yeah because like yeah they're definitely not from what I've seen close to that, like all the automation stuff's inside the cabin, I guess. I don't know. How they so do they are trying this market in two, three areas around the country. And it's usually from like the port to like a warehouse for UPS or something okay. on that level. It's like direct, same routes, right. predictable routes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the same with these um, automatic cars, you know? Yeah. People fall asleep while driving and they end up um, in a ditch and yeah. the car blows up and yeah. they die. You know, it's like and it's like airplanes. They're automatic too, but you still have a pilot. Right, right. You're just an operator or yeah. something. Yeah. I mean, how stupid can you be to give a, a computer full autonomy over the vehicle? Yeah. You know, a 47, 747 can crash and oh, kill yeah. Yeah. thousand people. Yeah. A big rig could crash and kill a dozen people. Yeah. And you don't want to have anybody in the seat to override that system, yeah. hit the brakes at least. It does seem almost impossible, like, <laughs> or at least very far fetched. This is not the Jetsons. Because, yeah, you never, I don't know. It's the same reason I think for any kind of like vehicle jobs up here, there's so much scrutiny because it's like, yeah, you don't want to have like thousands of pounds just with no human being and you know like right. it's just so a lot of the new trucks though the um electric ones you're talking about they they're fitting them with um um car batteries like a tesla gotcha but you'll still have um an operator okay um they're working on the longevity of the battery so you can work a 14 hour day have enough juice to haul your cargo from point A to point B and back to wherever you're going and then be able to charge and um, be ready for the next day. Yeah. But the thing too, they're talking about, you know, the amount of power it takes for a big rig to charge completely obviously is greater than a car. Yeah. 
you know, so a car you could charge in however many hours. It's like maybe an hour or something. Yeah, if you got that super plug in, the 220 or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So it's obviously going to take longer for a big rig. So one thing too with big rigs, you know, if the wheels aren't moving, you're not making money. Yeah. So they have, especially like Walmart and Swift, they have what you call a slip seat. So when I complete my 12 hour shift, somebody else will jump in that truck, fill it up and work their 12 hour shift Mm, and do that day in and day out. So that truck's it's constantly moving. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's interesting. I never knew that. Yeah. So if you have an electric vehicle and it's sitting there getting charged, it's not making money. Right. Yeah. There's there's so many problems with that too because I've heard even with uh like consumer like consumer trucks like the lightning and stuff like the towing and stuff I've heard especially uphill like it just kills the battery and so it's like well duh yeah <laughs> you got to get energy from somewhere the whole the whole like payload aspect of it doesn't mm-hmm. seem to make sense so it's like, here's another ironic funny <laughs> yeah. The they're working on electric vehicles to stop using bio yeah. diesel, or diesel or fuel fuels fossil or, yeah, fuels. Yeah. Yet the majority of the power plants <laughs> yeah, that they, you're getting your power from is using that, is yeah. using fossil fuel. Well, and there's so many other things of like you know I thought you were gonna say because like the trucks electric trucks would take up so much to charge, but I've heard even today we don't have the grid to even charge we don't. cars. So it's like yeah. Drugs are going to be way more okay, than that. Okay, well, let's take it to another funny. Mm-hmm. When Texas had that heat um, going on last year, not just this year, but last year, yeah. they said uh, they sent out a memo to all the um, Tesla drivers, don't, don't drive charge it. your cars <laughs> because we're using that for air conditioning. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Because the grid can only go so far. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. And the same thing for California. They had just enacted, okay, no more car uh, charge. Yeah. By 2035. And then like the next day, <laughs> yeah. their electric grid was going down. I remember that. Yeah. Because <laughs> California, yeah, they're like the leader on all that stuff. And then like every summer they have these brownouts and then they're like, don't turn yeah. your car. Don't, yeah. don't use your AC, <laughs> yeah. like all this stuff. And, <laughs> so it doesn't make sense. But, yeah. Stupid. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't see that stuff ever anytime soon, like kind of, I don't know. It's an interesting idea. I like the Tesla truck, but it just- I like the concept. It doesn't seem like it's functional yet, but- Yeah, I, I mean, it's still 2023. It's Again, it's not the Jetsons. It's still going to take a while. Yeah. And they were even making fun of, um, I think it was Bill Gates making fun of Elon. With the uh, track or something? No, about his um, Tesla. Mm. And it's like, you're cutting my, my, my stocks. <laughs> And it's like, dude, I'm the one out here with my foot in front <laughs> trying to make it a better world yeah. with electric vehicles. And you're trying to cut yeah. my feet out I, from under me. I remember what you're talking about. Yeah, he, short, he shorted Tesla. Yeah, yeah his yeah. stocks. Yeah. It's like, dude, I'm trying to make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're coming at me. Yeah. You know, it's just oh, Yeah, it's there's, just so, stupid. There, there's a lot of that today. And it's just, it drives me crazy. But Yeah. Um, oh, let me go back to you. You're asking about the day in the life. So that was like over the road. Yeah. So right before I did, I started flat bedding, um, I did long haul. Okay. So long haul is more like regional. So I was picking up produce in Yakima or Wenatchee, uh, apples or pears, you know, cause that's the agriculture yeah. of, of our region. That's what they got out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and I was hauling that down to LA with a bunch of other drivers or San Francisco, the markets. Um, and the market's a whole nother story. Whew. What you, oh, like delivering two markets? Two you? markets, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to get in. And okay. Dude, that, yeah. I'm going to ask you about something after that. You just reminded me, but keep going. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, and then after I delivered the apples or cheese, whatever I was hauling, I would go to up to eight different warehouses to pick up produce. Anywhere from between berries to um, grapes you know, anything fresh. Yeah. And when I mean fresh, I mean fresh. This is just like you would picked. show up. Yeah. You, you just picked yeah. and just washed. Actually, not even just washed yet, just freshly picked. They don't wash it yet. Yeah. yeah. And then they go for a wash and then they chill it down to 34 degrees. Okay. And so you would go to all these places, check in. If somebody was ready, then you'd dock. You know, they would load you and then you would go to the other seven. And you would do that for about 24 hour period. Jeez. And that's a, yeah. literally. And that's all in one city, you're saying? Yeah. Mm, not go- necessarily. Sometimes I would start it in LA, end up in Oxnard. Okay. 
um, and then head north. You kind of string it to where your route is going. Or, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and then head north, and you're pretty much doing an overnighter with one 10-hour layover for your nap. Okay. Nap and shower, and then um, deliver a period of Portland or Seattle. And that way, that's how you get your food. Mm-hmm. And then I would go back to Yakima, take a couple of days off, and do it all over again. So that would be a day in the life of a long haul. And, and you then, do, that's like a couple of times a week you do that sort of? Or? One run a week. One run a week, okay. Well, yeah. I guess, yeah, it's taken. Yeah, so I would pick yeah. up cheese in the morning on Saturday, uh, layover in um, Northern California, and then Sunday I would head down, take a nap, and Monday morning about three in the morning okay deliver yeah and then after i'm done deliver i would head to like oxnard take a nap right before eight o'clock when they open and get started on picking and when i'm done picking head north okay yeah it's it's interesting there's different like options even with just trekking like you can do these different styles or Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, but you made me think of that i was gonna ask you this (laughs) i asked somebody uh i asked a who was it? I think a farmer I had on here about this. I'm trying to remember who I asked. But anyway, there's a there's a down part of downtown Portland where they basically there's like three blocks where they're just excluding delivery trucks of any kind. For and this is just like a fossil fuels. It, it's like a woke thing, yeah. It's like yeah, but um just using electric vehicles. But I just I feel like stuff like that just makes people's life harder. Oh yeah. You're just trying to deliver stuff and like now yeah. they gotta find this other area to kinda like yeah. I don't know. And it takes more time. And Again, they don't, don't like know. truckers. Yeah. You know, they want your product. They yeah. want what you have on your trailer, but they don't want you in yeah. or around their business. Which is such a silly concept because, like, yeah, any city as big as Portland or bigger, it's like they need all that stuff. And if they just exclude them, then it just makes everyone's life harder and delivery times longer, and I just don't get it. But And then you get to the grocery store or wherever you're going, and the shelves are empty. Yeah. And then who are you going to blame? Yeah, it just seems yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy. You just become the enemy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're enemy because your food or product is not there. We're enemy on the road because we're on the road. Yeah. You know they just don't like us until their shelves are bare. Yeah, yeah. It is, I do feel like, and then they blame us. I do feel like it's like a thankless thing. Yeah, and like you were saying, unless they have like a family member or somebody they know, and then they're like, oh, okay, I kind of get mm-hmm. that. You know, this is a necessary thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm glad we were talking about the thing because I was going to ask you about remote work. I ask almost every single person about this because it drives me crazy just doing video. Like, because like you were saying in the pandemic, I had to go into work a lot just because I got to be on location with video or like cameras and shooting. And it just, I was curious your take on it because you kind of mentioned earlier, like, yeah, you still had to deliver shit during <laughs> that time. And there's just such an attitude today of people that, even now in 2023, they don't want to leave their house, but they'll have everything delivered. And I just don't. People have gotten so lazy. Yeah, I just don't get the like. They don't see that people have to do that work. Yeah. Know, and like, remember the movie Wally? You ever see that yeah, one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see how big they got? Yeah. They all live on the ship, and yeah. You're seeing it right now. Yeah. You're so lazy. <laughs> you can't even go out and pick up your own yeah, food. Yeah, yeah. I just, I don't know. It just. I'm torn on it though, because like I know a lot of people that work from home, and I get it. Like if you're just talking on the phone all day, Do you know how much that costs. Yeah. Delivery every oh, day. Yeah. Come on. It is a premium. You're paying a premium. Yeah, yeah. And I, I am not gonna lie. I do it. I do Uber Eats sometimes. But oh, we've yeah. done it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if, you know, the wife is sick or the kid is sick. Yeah. You know, I'll either go or if we're all sick, we'll just order in. Yeah. You know, if we got something going on, you know, we'll order in. You know, but is it just something that you? Because this is what my other restaurant buddy told me. He's like, I just can't identify with that, like any kind of sense of working from home or remote work. Because obviously, it's just not even an option for you. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Unless you live in your truck. Okay, like you're saying. Then yeah. you yeah. would be working from home. It is kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. But that's but, how common is that? Is that? Oh, it's very common. Okay. Yeah, you got all those long you know, haulers or over the road is what you call it. OTR. And yep. mil- millions of them out there. And they're not paying for apartments or they just... Yeah, they just live in do. their truck. Yeah. It's a great way to save and make money. It mm-hmm. like, you know, but yeah. Yeah. Well, so when you get to... Okay. So after so many hours, you have to have what you call a 34-hour reset. Okay. You got to get off your rig sometimes. Yeah. So again, back when I started, there was no Uber, no nothing. Mm-hmm. 
But nowadays, you can call an Uber. You can park your truck in Portland. You can call an Uber. It'll pick you up and take you downtown. And you can go kick it downtown for the day. Mm-hmm. You know, in San Francisco, you can go kick it downtown, hit Coit Tower, do a tour of Alcatraz. Yeah. You know, if you had a friend or, you know, girl with you, you know, hey, honey, you want to go to wherever? Sure. So it's made life a lot better, and that's yeah, yeah. you know. Well, I mean, you had taxis back then, but they were like twice the amount. You know, I had a taxi from from um, Troutdale Truck Stop downtown Portland, thirty bucks one way. Wow, yeah, you know. Well, and it's like I used to use taxis before those stuff too, and it wasn't as reliable. Like sometimes you'd call them, they're like, "All right, we'll send somebody in." Oh, they would come pick up a trucker. Okay, (laughs) they want that money. Oh yeah. (laughs) Okay. Oh yeah. That's interesting though. Um. Yeah, I'm just always curious about that stuff. It drives me crazy. But uh, let's talk about your uh, Northwest stuff. Just how did did you grow up here originally? Or Yakima, Yakima, the sweet side. Okay, because I remember Washington. you you were you're like high school. You went to high school with Sean, right? No, oh, so that, am I running that wrong? I no, um, yeah. It was in '01. We met in Mexico. Okay. Um, it was uh, right at the end of spring break. It was like March into March. And uh, she lived in Portland. I lived in Seattle. And we stayed friends. But so when I moved from Yakima to Seattle, that's where I was going to college. And so I was in college at that time. Okay. But you're a, uh, I guess that's Washingtonian. You yeah. Grew up in there. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'm always just curious how people. Yeah. Well, story. I started in L.A. I was born in L.A. Okay. Yeah, my parents, uh, my dad was Navy. And just gotten out, my mom, I'm half Mexican, so they met in um, a pattern cutting factory. They were making clothes. Okay. Textiles or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Patterns, yeah. Yeah. And then um, they got married in Mexico, and when I was young, just a baby, his dad, my granddad, had um, diagnosis for lung disease from smoking. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't going to make it, so they thought... So we moved up here to be with him the last mm, parts of his life. I and see. he ended up lasting like another 20 years. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> so we were stuck in Yakima, yeah. which at that time it was a pretty nice place to. Was it? Okay. Yeah. You know. I always hear bad things about it now, but I'm well, like. Well, now. I, I, yeah. I came from like sort of a desert town and it looks like that to me. It's kind of mm-hmm. like in the bottom of the valley. It is. It is a valley. Yeah. Uh, the Yakima Valley. And I just like those kind of, I don't know, it looks scenic. But everyone always tells me like, you don't want to go there. And stuff. Well, know. now. <laughs> it's not very good. No. Okay. Gangland. Okay. They have crime problems and stuff. Oh, yeah. a l- big time. Okay. I mean, what city doesn't, but this one, you know, when I worked for county for a while, you see it a lot more. Yeah. You know, you get all those calls or blah, blah, blah. And yeah, Wapato, Toppenish, stay away. Okay. <laughs> okay. I haven't been yet, so. Yeah. Um, You're not missing. <laughs> um, tell me, I ask every guest this, but your favorite thing in the Northwest it could be a person, place, thing. Yeah. Anything. So one thing I love about the Pacific Northwest is that it's a rainforest. Okay. Yeah. You know, the smells out here, any time of the year, you know, you get the pine tree smells, you get yeah. the, um, not as much as the ocean here. It was more so you could smell the ocean water in Seattle from Elliott Bay. Yeah. And you know, obviously we're, we don't have a ocean coming in here, but the greenery, you know, you get the views of the mountain. You know, here you got Hood. You can see a little bit of um, Adams and um, Helens on particular parts of the day, yeah, whatever yeah. altitude you're at. I mean, I used to live in Seattle. You can see Rainier pretty much from any part of the city. Wow, okay. And Rainier just, just gorgeous. Yeah. So when I used to fly too, you used to, I used to fly around those mountains. So Rainier is 14,410. Okay. Tall. Okay. And the ceiling of the plane I had at that time was fifteen thousand. And you're not going to fly over the top of Rainier, not unless. But you you're got... right on that threshold. Yeah. 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 But two, you don't want to really fly right over it just because of the winds. It could take you down. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so you would fly around it. But I did fly right over the top of Mount St. Helens. Nice. Yeah. Got That's awesome. Good pictures of that one. That was yeah. cool. That's really cool. Um. Well, yeah, I guess it, mm. as a pilot too. Yeah, you have a unique ex- like vision or just experience of all those sights and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I've flown in and out of LA three times, Texas once, Vegas, Canada twice. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, 
the, spend as much time as you want on this one too. What's your least favorite thing in the Northwest? Some people have a long list. <laughs> A lot of my episodes are like all just about this, but uh, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of problems here. <laughs> so, Portland back in the day, because I used to deliver here too um, years ago when I used to run out of Yakima. Mm. So, I'm not unfamiliar with Portland. And Portland, I mean, it's still a beautiful city, but just what they've done to it in the last three years. Yeah. Or even it's, five years. Or, yeah. 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 But, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, specifically the last three years. Yeah. yeah. The last three really hit Portland pretty hard. Yeah. It's just sad. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, but we live in battleground. We live off the grid. And when I work, I'm in my big rig, so you can't hurt me. Yeah. You know, I'm always watching my six. There's other reasons why you can't hurt me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. But, um... So I protect me and my family best I can. doesn't matter where I am. Yeah. You know, and I make sure she's protected too, you know, so. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's sad, but I hate seeing the homeless and homeless back in the day is different than the homeless now. Yep. Completely different. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those camps. Mm-hmm. And you see them all the way, all across the country. So I delivered as far south as Ote Mesa, which you could throw a rock and it would land in Mexico. Okay, it's right on the border. Right yeah. on the border. Um, um, Northern Washington, Sumas. I used to pick up um, shingles, roofing shingles. Mm-hmm. Again, the stones throw from Canadian border. So I've driven literally from border to border. And the homeless crisis is it's gone just yeah. stupid. I, what I always say on the show is like, and this is just maybe my opinion, but it's a West Coast problem for the most part. Like you see this in other cities, but like this is a this is a West Coast like liberal city problem, you know. And I wasn't gonna bring that up. I mean, <laughs> I, I really was not gonna. No, bring it's like you. I I talk about this stuff all the time on the show, but you you <laughs> say as much as you want to say put it that way. But I'm just I've lived here since 2006, and I know that. You know, the city didn't used to be this way. People didn't used to do these crazy, like, insane drugs. Drugs were never legal. Yeah. They made small amounts of cocaine, yeah. meth, and whatever else that is. Measure 110. Yeah. 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 Legal. Yeah. <laughs> You're making that legal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> you and won't I... make marijuana legal. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> That's the one thing that, like, drives me crazy here. And, like, I still talk to people, even on this show, who, like, don't see that as a problem. And I'm like... When you because they're part that, of the problem. Yeah, when you allow that, that you, we've seen the past three years what happens, and you know, that's where and we're now at. they're trying yeah. to reverse it. Yeah, you know, maybe that wasn't such a good idea after they're, all. They're finally yeah thinking about it. Yeah, um, Echo Park, one of the biggest old school. L A. Mm-hmm. L A. Yep. Yeah. So um, bad homeless crisis. So what does the city do? They shut down the entire park. They spend millions in cleaning it up. This is recently, right? Uh huh. Yeah. And just to open it back up for the homeless. So they cleaned it up and now it's like a camp sort of thing. Yeah. I I know some people down there and I hear that's like, I mean, I think LA has like 50,000. It's like its own city of homeless people. I don't know how many. It's yeah. astronomical. Skid Row is like four times what it used to be back yeah. in the day. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. scary down there. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah. And it stinks. Yeah. And you're right downtown LA. <laughs> yeah. Skid Row is right downtown LA. Yeah. You're blocks away from the library building, the round one that got blew up in Independence Day <laughs> that says US Bank. You are blocks away. I got to find that now. Blocks I don't away. I'm blowing that up. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. The first Independence Day movie back in the 90s. Yeah. Will Smith. And, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I, need, I do need to go. I want to go down there because I have some friends there. And I go I, during I, the day. I haven't been since 2019. Go but, during the day. Yeah. I mean, not just even, <laughs> even Hollywood Boulevard. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. at night it's always different at night. I mean, yeah. But now during the day, be careful. It's just yeah, too much going on. Yeah, be careful. Yeah, well, I always feel too that like hopefully there's uh, hope here still in the Northwest, but I'm trying. I don't know. That's why I'm trying to do with this show is get people that know aware of this stuff and talk about it. But um, yeah, thanks so much. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up here? 
I was I was also gonna mention you're a Harley driver. You're, you got the shirt on, but you got to relax somehow. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a beautiful bike. I've seen it, but yeah, um, it is our pleasure. We enjoy it. Yeah, you know when even when she has a bad day, babe, we need a ride. Okay, <laughs> it, it just it just makes people happy. And, yeah. yeah, and it's nice where we live because we're minutes away from country. Yeah. So we are literally like one block or one mile from riding in the country. From our house, it's about 15 minutes to Lucia and Moulton Falls and 30 minutes to Sunset Falls. Wow. You know, we're just down the road from Yakult, Amboy, and the roads are like this. You just got those nice, yeah. Mm, you get the country smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's hardly any traffic out there. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. And we... I, I love the roads here too in Oregon, but just getting to Oregon after a certain time mm -hmm. or trying to get back, mm -hmm. it's not easy, even on a bike. So a lot of times too, we'll go down to Cascade Locks. Mm -hmm. So we'll take um, the back roads down Salmon Falls Road, jump over um, the Bridge of the Gods. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and have our little lunch there at Brigham um, Fish Market. And you know, to stay out of Oregon, we'll just go back over the bridge come back to Washington so that's a nice ride too yeah but yeah we did Silver Falls here a few years ago that one's nice did the back roads there beautiful mm. and we walked around the falls for a little bit took a couple pictures you know but yeah the roads here in Oregon too are just gorgeous yeah you know it's just getting to Oregon or getting out mm. of Oregon mm -hmm. yeah hopefully it's uh, I don't know I complain so much about the roads and stuff up here but <laughs> Well, the roads and then here... they're talking about tolling in the future and all this stuff. The thing about the roads is you're not going to take out all these businesses or houses to make a bigger road. Right. So when they did the infrastructure way back when, they did not expect Portland to get as big as it did. And same for Seattle, too. I mean, you can't build roads wider than it is because of the water. Yeah, they're right up against the bay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, with the... Um, other businesses and buildings there already you're not you can't widen the road so right, right. you're stuck the way it is unless they double deck the freeway Stack it, yeah yeah and then there they say i think it's like a billion dollars a mile wow. yeah <laughs> you know just something astronomical it's so expensive i remember when they were building the new tunnel oh. up there and that took like 10 years or it something. took a long time yeah, yeah. well they had a snafu with big bertha and something happened down below it got stuck or something yeah, yeah. but that took a long time yeah but it looks nice now. I haven't been through it yet. I need to go drive through that. But. Yeah, it looks nice. It just, it, again, traffic. Yeah. You know, if you're not going through there early or coming out late, you're oh, stuck in traffic yeah. and you're just hosed. I feel like with Seattle, yeah, it's like you get up there anytime from like 2 p.m. to like 7. You're just, mm -hmm. you're stuck in it. And, there's no, yeah. and I used to deliver two for what I do now in there sometimes. So I'm glad I don't go up there anymore. I mean, I have enough problems with Portland here, but yeah. Um, but you get used to it, and then a lot of the places I deliver to the lumberyards um, or back roads or, you know, you leave early enough, too, where you're not having to deal with traffic. You know, usually by the time I set out of the yard, I'm leaving at 6, 6.30. That's when the traffic lights just start really working. Mm -hmm. So and sometimes if you have a long day, you'll come back with traffic. But, again, you try to get early to where you're beating traffic on the way down. And beating traffic on the way back. Guessing it, yeah, both yeah. times, yeah. yeah. I, w I want to ask you really quick, to, uh, just about <laughs> before we wrap it up, about CBs. Like, I'm guessing that's still a huge part of. No, okay. Unfortunately, that's just in, like my own like TV no, movie. Pr thing no, of, like, it's not. It's it used to be the way of the life of the trucker. So we were talking about those accidents earlier. Mm -hmm. If drivers would use their CB like they did back in the day, you could raise somebody on the radio hey you know there's a brake check at mile marker such and such yeah watch it you got eyes down the road yeah yeah mm -hmm. so again you know like i was saying how cars follow trucks because we guide the way same thing with accidents ahead mm -hmm. so if somebody warns me down the road hey olson you got it on so i'll raise the radio and be like yeah what's up hey there's a brake check here at mile marker southbound on the five watch it you know somebody coming north that's seen it yeah. so while i approach that um biomarker i'll start slowing down 
and usually the vehicles behind you will start slowing down, throw on your four ways, your flashers. Mm -hmm. That way they have an opportunity to slow down. That, yeah. that way you're not breaking hard. And usually you can break hard even in summer, of course, but those are mainly for like winter or adverse weather conditions. When you need that time. When you, yeah, yeah, you need that distance to stop. Yeah. You know, you're not just going to hit a brake check, you know, on the ice. It's kind of like your own, I was thinking, ways or like, you know, you're getting these yeah. heads up. And, yeah, but, absolutely. But you're saying people don't use it as much? Uh -uh. Okay. Well, so back in the day, there were more English drivers than there are now. Okay. So a lot of times the Spanish speaking community. So like in um, the five, we usually use channel 17. All other um, areas is channel 19. Okay. So you back that off 10 notches and that's where you'll find your Spanish speaking um, using. So the, instead of 17, they'll be using seven or nine. I got you. Subtract 10. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so the um, people from India, I don't know what channel they use. And of course they all speak their own language. So they're using their channel, but, if you're not using your CB, it doesn't matter what language you speak. Yeah. You're going to be having a problem down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in a lot of these truckers, unfortunately, especially out of Surrey, BC, they drive way too fast. Okay. Why? Is, that's a Canadian thing or something? Uh, no, it's mostly Canadian. You'll see it mostly, but <laughs> you'll see a lot of trucks driving really fast. They're just too. going. Yeah. Yeah. So those big companies like England and Swift, whatever they'll, they'll be governed like at 62, 65. That's what I was just wondering. Cause I thought they were like re speed capped or whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. They do. It's for fuel mileage. Okay. But they don't do it up in BC or whatever. They're not doing that. No, but a lot of those might be owner ops where they can I dial okay. their, do whatever they want. Yeah. yeah. So when they're down here, they're doing like 70, 75. It's like way wow. too fast. Yeah, yeah. That is fast. Yeah. That's way too fast. I'm not saying it's fast. Say, for instance, if you're in a state that has that speed, because when you have different speeds for cars and trucks, then there's a problem. Yeah. You know, and if everybody had the same speed limit, then you can at least not be feared of getting pulled over because, oh my God, you're going way too fast. Yeah. But this car that was being an idiot was swerving to get around you because they had really some place to be. And now there's an accident. Yeah. You That's know? interesting. I've never thought about it, but so you think if it was a, if one speed, absolutely it would be way safer. Yeah. yeah. So if you travel outside of the West coast, these liberal States, yeah. <laughs> you will see that. Is that what happens? Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Montana, Idaho, yeah. Utah, Speed limit in Utah is 80. Yeah. I was just thinking that because- For both. I, big rigs and cars. In that game that I played, that's when I was like, I love it out here because I can go like 80, yeah. 75 or whatever it is. Yeah. Yep. So it's just, they just have one speed and that's yeah. it. See, yeah. California, they impede the flow of traffic with big rigs. So a cop will tell you 62. Okay. That's a weird speed. Yeah. <sighs> I was like, I was here 65 or 55 in Oregon, I guess, or California. But. So Oregon used to be slower, I don't know, 20 years ago. I can't remember when they bumped their speeds up. Okay. But they bumped it up for cars and, and big rigs. And then going west of, I think it's the Dalles, they bump it up another five until you get to Idaho, and then they bump it up another five. Okay. And then Utah is another five, where you're now at 80. Wow, okay. So that's a huge difference, just oh, yeah. a couple states over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when yeah. you're driving a big rig at 80. <laughs> <laughs> It's so much weight and just, yeah. You're, yeah. You're just flying. Yeah. 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 It takes a while to get used to. Yeah. Um, and Montana, same thing, you know, it's like 80 or something like that out there. Yeah. I haven't been through Montana for several years, so I can't remember, but. Yeah. Yeah. Montana, you're moving too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've heard a lot of stories about that. Yeah. Cause they, even with just cars, you can go out there and basically, I, th I thought for a while they had no speed limit. Yeah, yeah. Long time ago, they capped that. You're like, you got to have something. Yeah. yeah you got to at least post something. <laughs> something. Yeah. And then at night they did enforce it just because it's night. But during the day it was basically unlimited. Okay. Yeah. It was like the Autobahn. Like, oh yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah, like that, yeah. Cool, man. Well, yeah. Anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up here? I'm good. I thought this was fun. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Thanks for coming on. And, well, I'm uh, glad somebody's interested, you know, and maybe your podcast can at least save one life. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. You know, and that's what Shauna was saying, too. It's like, because I was asking her, you know, how far does your podcast go? You know, how many does it reach? 
And she was like, I'm not sure, but if it could at least have one person listen to it and maybe at least save one life. Totally, yeah. You know, because yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something tragic. Yeah. Happened to me. Actually, a couple things. Okay. Uh, years ago, my girlfriend, she was, and I had left her already. She was out with some new friends drinking, just couldn't stop. Yeah. Anyways, they had worked all day, partied all night, and was on their way back home early in the morning. Her friend was driving, went the wrong way down the highway going from Yakima to Sila, went headlong into a big rig. So the driver didn't make it. Yeah. Two children. Um, my girl, ex-girlfriend at the time um, was pretty bad. Yeah. So they took her to the hospital, had to fix her liver staples cut her from here to here it's just opened up and mm-hmm. did all this work fix her liver jeez broke an ankle pelvis arm can't remember what else and so after they fixed her liver i believe they had a reviver at least once um they flew her to harborview to finish working on her and she was in acute icu for i think it was two weeks and then from there it was just icu for another two or three then wow. they had to send her home to be in a nursing home, basically, whatever you call that. Care thing. Or, yeah, yeah, for like another two months. Was she in a coma or was it just rehab and all um, that? No, so I can't remember if she was in a coma or not. It's this just a lot a of sur- surgery and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, and she was doped up. I mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then one time um, in 96, a uh, trainee with a trainer – so we have way stations that you have to scale up. And this trainee had passed the way station, not on purpose. And one thing you have to realize when you're operating a big rig, you're not driving the truck, you're pulling a trailer. So the truck is, I don't know, depends on your truck, 25, 30 feet long. Yeah. Some trucks are longer than others. But you have a 53 foot trailer behind you. So you're not driving a truck, you're pulling a trailer. Right, right. You know, so he pulled off to the side of the road thinking they were going to come after him. He pulls his truck off, but his trailer was still on the roadway. It's like this. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So now his trailer is still blocking the interstate. And then lo and behold, the guy was driving up and it was that night. Didn't have his four ways on yet or as of yet, because it just happened, I guess. And instead of, driving into traffic he took a right and took a right in the bumper just right in the trailer yeah the, you know what's crazy about that the, this happened to me a couple weeks ago and i almost the on ramp to downtown vancouver there was a trailer like that and i swerved <laughs> right at the last second didn't see this thing and luckily i didn't hit it at all but i can see how that you know if the thing's laying out there yeah like that's just you're not driving a truck yeah and I know that feeling too of a little bit at least because I briefly in my career worked at an Airstream place and I had to tow Airstream trailers. And it is like the whole time I'm just looking at that thing because it's swerving and responding to what you're doing with the wheel, obviously. And, and then I'm worried about it scraping on trees. And yeah, because you're tall. Yeah. You know, the ones I drive, you can't be over 14 feet high. Clearance. Yeah. You know, a lot of those reefer trailers are like 13.6, 13.8, mm-hmm. you know, but for what I do, it's 14 feet. Okay. So yeah, you have to worry about going under um, the lights, lights and the street lights, underpasses um, and stuff, and yeah. yeah. And you'll see the signs, and you just read the signs, you know. But a lot of times you'll get on YouTube and you'll see these trucks. I've seen, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or I've, there's a channel where there's like a where, uh, an underpass where that happens all the mm-hmm. time, and so they just record yep. all the stuff. And I've seen uh, like <laughs> RVs will clip their yeah. AC units off yeah. and stuff, and yeah. yeah. I just like that, like the level of awareness any kind of transport like truckers or even yeah like pilots and stuff it's just amazing that it's called situational awareness situational awareness okay yeah i just i don't know it's so crucial and i feel like very com- much so. common drivers up here just don't yeah or they're not in tune with well you know these schools that are putting out drivers should <laughs> sorry just trying to climb up should put some emphasis on at least dedicating an hour or two to informing the children learning how to drive about trucks. Okay. Yeah. Or about RVs, you know, cause you don't need a CDL to drive an RV. Right. Right. You know, 
no formal training is needed. Oh, you want that? Okay, here's your check. Okay, all right, sign here. It's yours, hook it. Just have a nice day. Yeah, hop, if you, hop if you need in. help, give me a call. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because I was going to bring up um, just as a thing. I had a Lyft driver maybe a couple months ago, and he had hurt his leg or something, but he was saying he was basically doing any trucking that didn't require CDL. And I was like thinking, oh, I didn't even think about that's a thing. So he was driving these like box trucks basically. Yeah, you got to be kind of 12.5. Kind of what you're saying. But if you're doing it for money, technically you should have a commercial driver's license. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, CDL, if you're making money, that's, yeah. that's what it's called. So, yeah. Okay. Because there's class A, B, and C. Okay. Yeah, I remember you saying that earlier. So, yeah, I was thinking about that. But, um, but yeah, you can still do it. Um, there's a lot of these hot shot drivers that have these one ton trucks and pulling like two or three cars on a trailer, you know, and it has US DOT on the side. Okay. You know, they're to, towing cars. Yeah. 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 You know, either damaged cars or brand new cars. Yeah. Or yeah. Just transport, period. Yeah. But you're still making money. You're in your own rig and you got a commercial license. Okay. Yeah. Paying the man the money and you're getting your cut and yeah. getting on down the road. Oh, yeah. One thing, too, how <clears throat> I was saying about that guy who um, got clipped. Yeah. Yeah. So I take trucking personally. So you um, do the best you can to get home, mm -hmm. get home safe, and make sure the other people around you get home safe. Because that guy happened to, my, to be my dad. Oh, shit, man. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, that, that totally makes sense why you're... I, th I would say so good at it and so aware of that stuff. And, well, you know, you know it that's a crazy you. story, though. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. It was like 23 years ago. Yeah. But, but yeah, just be careful. Is that, is that common? Like, do you have <laughs> friends that have the same type of thing or? Well, so it's nice. I work with a small group of people now to where, yeah, you hear stories, but we, are good at what we do. We've been doing it for years. We're all professional. We all talk to each other, kind of like we're doing now. Yeah. And again, it brings situational awareness. Well, this happened to me. Well, this happened to me. It's like, okay, well, don't be in the right lane. Be in the center lane. Yeah. You know, or on this stretch of the road, there's going to be real construction. So get over to the left so you don't get cut off or clipped or whatever. And then after it's over, you can cut over to the center lane or right lane, you know. Oh, hey, yeah, I've been there before. This is how you get in there, you know, and this is how you get out. And this is who you call, you know, so you communicate. Yeah. You know, just like a CB too, you know, communicate, you know, and the best form um, of communication is, again, situational awareness. You know where you're at, you know where you're going, or somebody else has, you know, just talk to them. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's interesting the way you said it. It was like that camaraderie just helps everyone yeah. be more safe. And yeah. So... When you first start out, you typically are supposed to have two or two years over the road driving before any of the um, nicer companies will touch you. Okay. So who I work for and a lot of the other places will require two years minimum of over the road. Oh, you got your two years under your belt? Well, come drive for me. So those small com or those big companies don't pay a lot. It's a small check, like six, seven hundred bucks a week, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um. But when you get into what I do, your minimum of two years experience, um, I pull in over five a month. Wow. Yeah. So, which is not bad. So, with the same company, I used to haul scrap metal and there's a lot of money in trash. Yeah. And, yeah. And I used to make over six grand a month there. Jeez. After taxes, you know, but you're working. <laughs> yeah. You know, and all you're doing is driving for sure. They load you with a grapple, put it in your trailer trash yeah get to where you're going they unload you or sometimes you'll have a pto trailer where you just push a button and the trailer will go like that and you dump mm. close the tailgate and you're off to the next run but um yeah i was after taxes i was clearing six grand a month yeah and all i was doing was driving two trips to eugene or one to medford you know when just i used to do medford man. i used to wake up at two in the morning uh leave the yard at 250 get to medford at eight get loaded Book on down the road, hit Portland, dump, and get back over the bridge. And that was a 14-hour day. Wow. Yeah. Four hours, 45 minutes down, five hours back loaded, however much time to load and unload, one stop for fuel, 
you know, you're not dinking around, you're you're digging yeah, yeah. dirt. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard, long day, but, yeah. but it's worth the but money. But it's easy. Yeah. Well, it's worth it if you want it to be worth it. Yeah. Like me, I would rather have more home time mm-hmm. with the wife and kid than to be on the road making more money. So I took a sacrifice. You know, I'm doing, now I'm waking up at 4, 4.30 in the morning, work until noon, sometimes 2 or 3, depends on my run, and I'm done. You and know, then so, you have that time. Yeah, yeah, I can go home, cut the grass, you know, do the dishes. That way she's not doing that crap when she gets home, you know. Yeah. And then I can still lounge. I can hit the hot tub or even take a bike ride before she even gets home. <laughs> nice. It's a pretty good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah, so I can't complain. Um, Yeah, I was just thinking, I don't know why I think about this sometimes, but I always think like there should be, um, what's the word that everyone uses now? Um, yeah, Not innovation. What do they call it when they, uh, disruption <laughs> in the trash industry? Because I think people don't think about how much money there is in that stuff of like scrap metal, trash, recycling. Like One man's trash is another man's treasure. Everyone's got to move it. And, yep. you know, anyway. and nobody wants to do it. Yeah. So that's another reason why it gets paid well. Yeah. And it stinks. People are just like, I don't want to. Yeah. It stinks. I'm even staying the staying away. Yeah. Right? Even the scrap metal yards, you know, it was just cars and washing machines, dishwashers, that kind of stuff. Um, burnt down cars from the Mill City fire or the Northern California fires, you know, but it was good money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, all I did was sit in my truck. Yeah. But that hurts after a while. Yeah. I'd um, imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's probably a, like a problematic thing for a lot of drivers, I would think. But yeah. Well, yeah, you're just sitting there. Yeah. Oh, all you do is sit there and drive. <laughs> yeah. Which that is literally true. But it's not just that. When you're driving through traffic, that's a mind game for you. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know, because who's going to cut you off now? Yeah. You know, and I've had that happen pulling that big trailer. Mm-hmm. You know, I was 102,000 pounds and this person from the left lane, oh, there's my exit. <laughs> Oh, look, I can't get off on my exit because it's backed up all the way here. So I'm just going to stop on the freeway. Yeah, slam on your brake. Dude, I'm 100,000 pounds in the in the granny lane moving. Yeah. I was moving. Right. I locked him up. I saw a guy do this like a week or two ago and smoke came out of his brakes oh, and all this yeah. stuff. But he stopped right in time. But it was, uh, I think he was in the middle and it's on 205. But I heard it because it was right next to me and he just... I don't know. Is that what you're saying? The emergency brake or one of those? Oh, or? well, you don't have an emergency brake. You just hit your brakes okay. and all your brakes lock up. Gotcha. Yeah. Your they brakes come out. Yeah. lock up. So for a truck, a big rig, you'll even have brakes on your steers. Okay. On your front wheels. Everything. On your drop axles, your drives, and all your trailer. Yeah. Every single axle has a brake. And there's big old drum brakes too. Okay. Huge. And the pads are... Yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah, if they're discs or drums, and they're wide, they're drums for the train. Well, isn't there uh, air or what am I thinking of? Okay, it's operated by air. Okay, gotcha. So it is an air brake. So, but that's just to signal it or something. No, that your whole system runs on air. Okay. So we have a compressor in the motor, Mm -hmm. and we have tanks, and it fills up the tanks. And you don't ever want to deplete your tanks because if it does, it automatically sets your brakes. Oh, I can see. Okay. So if you have a hole in your airline that's big enough when um, you're driving down the road and you see your 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 air tank start to go like that, you better pull over right now because it will lock your brakes It'll up. Just, it doesn't matter how fast you're going. Once that thing's gone, your brakes are locked up. And, and it yeah. pops your brakes. Wow. Yeah. It dumps your air brakes. That's what's cra- yeah, there's just so much to yeah. think about. So yeah. it rides on air. You know, because it's got the big old airbags on air, all of your axles. Air suspension. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the same system runs your brakes. Okay. So when you hear a truck next to you get to start moving, it, you'll hear it mm-hmm, kind of. Mm-hmm. It's the brakes releasing. The air is coming out. Yeah. yeah. So you can release your brakes and just start moving. Yeah. Crazy. But, um, yeah, I know when you hit your service brake pedal, all your brakes uh, engage. But when you hit it really hard, yeah, you're locking up. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's scary. yeah. And I was so close. I tried swerving. Of course, I'm looking in my mirror, and this guy next to me noticed. Again, why I say never sit next to trucks. But he noticed. And I was getting really close. I was still moving with my brakes locked. He moves over just in the nick of time. Just barely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And there was three cars there. 
I would have taken them all out. Yeah. And the first two I probably would have killed. Yeah. Because there's just nowhere to go. And yeah. now I don't drive in the right lane for that reason. Yeah. I don't blame. Yeah. I've, I see it happen. I see cars do that. Yeah. People. That's just through the city. Yeah. You know, on the open road, yeah, I'll be in the right lane. Yeah. You have to worry but about in them. the city, you got to worry about those idiots, those drivers like you were discussing yeah, yeah. that will be in the hammer lane. Oh, there's my exit. Yeah. It's, I see it literally every day. It's like within 50 feet of the exit sign. They just, oh, that's my exit. And I get in, I try to get in like a mile or two. Oh, yeah. You were talking about advance. this with the guy he worked with. Yeah. I work with a guy who does, he's, <laughs> that's right. he's not a good driver, but uh, and he also drives a Tesla. But, so, but he uses that acceleration to just, cut other drivers off to get in the exit too. So I don't know. I just, I'm not like that, but <laughs> what's five yeah. seconds going to hurt you. Yeah. Right. I'm okay. Waiting. Yeah. An extra couple minutes in that slow lane just to get, you know, I'd rather, cause what I'm afraid of is missing my exit and then having to go back around. And, but anyway, yeah. Well, yeah, man, <laughs> this was been, this was amazing. Um, I always tell people too, like if you ever want to do an episode, like if you have someone else you want to bring on or an episode, idea for an episode you're always welcome to come oh back. you don't want to talk to the other truckers i work with okay <laughs> <laughs> you're the good one you're the good one yeah you're lucky to find me <laughs> <laughs> no well i thank you so much for doing it man because i love this stuff and i also try to get like i mentioned the boat girl i try to get people with like unique jobs in the northwest up here so if there's anyone like that you know too you know just let me know try to get them on i'm a transplant here i actually don't know anybody over here okay. yeah. yeah and we keep a small circle yeah. The only people I know are Shauna's friends. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't have family here either, and neither do I. Yeah. Yeah. What? But, which is kind of nice because you don't get all the drama from all the other BS. Totally. Yeah. But it does kind of suck for her, for her kid that doesn't have family close to where he could visit grandpa or something. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. No home base or whatever. Yeah. Right. We're on our own. It's like our own little island. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think you should come back at some point. And, uh, but yeah, thanks for doing this, man. And, this was awesome.